Hi, this is Dennis with Cybercraft, and these are the ports and protocols you need to know for the Security Plus 701 exam. My name is Dennis. I'm the CEO of Cybercraft. I help train thousands of students every year to earn their Security Plus and other certifications. So I'm here to help you narrow down and understand the ports and protocol numbers you need to know for the Security Plus exam. There's thousands of protocols in use right now, so it's difficult to study this on your own without having somebody explain this to you. And there's lots of protocols and port numbers referenced in different Security Plus training materials that really you don't need to know anymore, especially for the 701 version. So what I've done is I've created a guide for you with all of the port, all the port numbers, all the protocols, their use, whether you use TCP or UDP connections, and I put it on this guide. It's free to you, uh, free to download. So this is entirely for you to use. Feel free to download a free sheet here. Uh, and I just wanna help you pass your Security Plus exam with this guy. So let's get into this. You're gonna see this is color coded with the OSI modeled layers of the protocol. Layer seven is gonna be in orange. And then we go down, layer four is in blue and layer two is in green. And what I'm doing here is I'm explaining which OSI model, Open Systems Interconnection Model layer applies to the protocol. You might need to know that information for certain test questions. They might have to ask you, you know, this layer seven protocol does this in a question. So it's good to know what layer of the OSI model the protocol pertains to. Most protocols are gonna fall in layer seven. It's also important to understand the port number, of course, most protocols traditionally operate over a certain port number, so that's included here. And then whether the connection the protocol uses is a TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, or UDP, User Datagram Protocol. That can be helpful, some use both. And then I've put a little description here in the sheet for each use of the protocol, just to help you differentiate it between the other protocols on the sheet and on the exam. A lot of times you'll have to pick out on the exam which protocol is the correct answer based on its characteristics. So that's helpful to understand as well. So we're gonna go ahead and, and run through each of these on the list. First, we have file transfer protocol, FTP. We have port 20 and 21. 21 is a control port, communicates and basically establishes the framework of the connection of the data transfer, and then 20 will transfer the files itself. Secure shell is also used for transmitting data, but secure shell is also used to remotely configure servers and different uh, devices. It's a very secure protocol, often used in Linux and Unix machines. Then we have SSH file transfer protocol, which is another type of file transfer protocol that operates over port 22 and uses SSH. It's it's different though than file transfer protocol and file transfer protocol secure, which is a different protocol entirely. We then have simple mail transfer protocol. We have a lot of mail email protocols. This is a type of mail transfer protocol. Usually it's used to connect clients like uh, Microsoft Outlook to different mail servers, SMTP. TACX Plus is a Cisco proprietary protocol, operates over port 49, and it's used with uh, AAA, authentication, authorization, accounting servers, and it's used with Cisco devices. So it's used to perform authentication in a Cisco framework. One thing to note, if you have an authentication protocol or you have a mail protocol, usually it's a higher level protocol, that's usually almost always gonna require a uh, authentication or a TCP connection to uh, have that TCP handshake process to negotiate the session initially. So usually those are TCP. Okay, especially for the mail servers, any email protocol is usually a TCP connection. Domain name system, this is when you type in like google.com, this associates those that google.com domain name with the IP address. And so you really you're connecting to the IP address for Google, uh, not google.com. The domain name system allows you to just type in a common name and then be resolved to an actual uh, IP address on the internet. So it's like a big directory that the internet operates on. That's a UDP connection. UDP connections are ideal for real-time connections, time-sensitive connections. It's a connectionless or a best effort connection. So it it's going to stream uh, the data. If it gets there, great. If it doesn't, 
that's fine. That's UDP's characteristic. There's no handshake process like you'd see with TCP. Dynamic host configuration protocol, DHCP. This is used uh, with home routers, for example. You know, if you, like, usually if you have a home Wi-Fi router, you would purchase one IP address from your ISP and then use DHCP with your router to automatically create multiple uh, private IP addresses to use within your home Wi-Fi network. That's what DHCP is used for over port 67 and 68. HTTP, again, it's a TCP connection that's used for web traffic. Mostly nowadays we use 443 HTTPS, which is the secure connection over transport layer security. Almost all websites use some form of encryption when uh, connecting to them. We have Kerberos, Kerberos port 88. This is an authentication protocol. Uses UDP, but updated versions, it can be used uh, to, can have a TCP connection and a lot of modern implicate or setups will use that TCP connection. POP, post office protocol, is another email protocol, email client. Network time protocol, UDP. This is to do synchronized devices with one standardized clock. Usually you can, you can even query, uh, there's national clocks national databases or natural NTP servers that you can uh, query and synchronize your devices to to make sure that all the devices are reporting the same time. That's very important for auditing purposes, for logging, to have all the devices have the same time. So instead of setting all those clocks manually, to all have them query an NTP server. Server message block is used with Windows protocols, Windows devices, and will allow you remote access into servers. There's a lot of malicious activity that happens compromising SMB, and that's over port 139, a UDP connection. IMAP, this is a very traditional email client. Uh, basically, it a, allows, there's a difference between POP and IMAP. POP will allow for two-way two communication between a client and an email server. So anything you do on your email client, sending messages, deleting messages, organizing messages into different folders, etc that's gonna be reflected on your email client server. If you use POP, you're basically just reading, it's a read-only view of what's on your server. With IMAP, you can affect changes to that server. We have SNMP. This allows you to basically monitor statistics, usage statistics, and health of various devices on your network. LDAP is used to, uh, it's a directory protocol used to query directories within an LDAP framework, port 389 for UDP for the unsecure version. We have port uh, 443 for HTTPS. HTTPS uses transport layer security for encryption. We don't use secure sockets layer anymore for encryption, even though that term's still thrown around. Now the technology is transport layer security. We also have secure socket tunneling protocol. That's why I mentioned secure sockets layer. This protocol uses uh, transport layer security to secure point-to-point -point tunneling protocol and layer-to-tunneling protocol uh, connections within a Windows environment. I mentioned server message block over 139. More updated versions of server message block or SMB use port 445, and this will force uh, SMB to be a TCP connection and add some encryption to that connection. So it's preferable to use port 445 for SMB. We have IPsec, IP security. IP security using ISAKIMP will basically, uh, it's, a, it's primarily used for VPNs for virtual private networks. And this is a UDP connection over 500, usually UDP. We have SMTP secure over port 587. This is the secure version of SMTP, uses transport layer security for encryption. LDAP secure is port 636. So we had 389 there, and now we have 636. This is the, this is uses TLS for encryption for LDAP secure. File transfer protocols for secure is using transport layer security for encryption. A lot of these use transport layer security. Just like we had file transfer protocol uh, 2021, we have 989 and 990 for file transfer protocol secure. 
I could also operate over port 20 and 21 while still using TLS, but sometimes it's over 989 or 990. IMAP secure, again, secure version of IMAP uses TLS, and then POP3 secure uses TLS as well. We have radius remote authentication dial-in user service, uses port one or 1812 and 1813. This is a authentication protocol using UDP. And we have an upgrade version of that called Diameter, which operates over port 3868, which adds some functionality to it and improves the uh, encryption of the authentication process. We also have Remote Desktop Protocol. This is a Windows proprietary protocol used if you ever have to do Microsoft support. Uh, they can use Remote Desktop Protocol to access your, your computer, or you as administrator can use RDP to access a client machine or one of your users' machines and affect changes there, basically take over uh, from that remote connection. And SRTP uh, replaces RTP. This is basically a way to use for streaming, uh, for multicast, where we're broadcasting to multiple users all at once. That's a streaming uh, protocol. Most streaming protocols are UDP, and this one operates over 5004. Now going down to the OSI model, down to layer four, the transport layer, we have transmission control protocol and user data gram protocol. Now these are basically protocol suites, TCP and UDP. They use multiple different protocols uh, to transmit packets over a network. TCP IP will have a handshake process with a synchronization packet, a SYN ACK packet received back from the client, and then an acknowledgement packet or an ACK packet sent back. And if you're interested in learning more about TCP IP, check out uh, other, the other videos we have and other resources we have teaching you about TCP IP. And UDP, which is, again, a best effort connection where packets are sent. If they arrive at the destination, great. If they don't, there's no integrity check built into UDP, but you can add some checksums uh, with some more advanced configurations. But mostly it's a best effort transmission, ideal for streaming and for multicast transmission. We also have point-to-point -point tunneling protocol, which is an older protocol used for VPNs. And remember, we have some upgrade protocols that work to secure P2P tunneling or port-to-point -point tunneling protocol uh, there. We also have in layer two, layer two tunneling protocol, which is an older VPN protocol as well. And this one needs IPsec for encryption if you want to use it. And point to point tunneling protocol essentially uh, uses, can also operate essentially at layer two. So we have it in both layer four and layer two. But these are older, they are really no longer used. They've been replaced with more advanced protocols here. So I hope this is helpful. These are all the protocols you need to know for the Security Plus exam. I know there's a lot out there and you can waste time studying, researching all the different protocols, all the different port numbers. These are the ones you could encounter on the test. There shouldn't be any others besides the ones on this list. So don't waste your time. Just study this resource, download the PDF sheet, use the link to download the sheet uh, and take a look at the protocols for yourself. Keep this as a reference sheet to help you in your Security Plus study. And if you're interested in learning or earning your Security Plus certification with accredited training, uh, check out our training courses. We have self-paced courses and instructor-led courses for Security Plus. Happy to help you earn your Security Plus certification. That's what I do. Happy to help you get that certification and start uh, your career in cybersecurity or advance your career if you already work in the field. But I hope this is helpful. Thanks so much for watching the video. Appreciate you uh, joining in and watching this. If you need anything or if you have any questions, please reach out info at cybercrafttraining.com. We'll be happy to answer any questions you have. I hope you have a great day. Take care.